Hello friends and welcome to GHK Radio episode 10, also known as the season finale. finale. Can you believe it? Hello! Pacha. We made it! It's the ten hush, 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 hush. episodes plus, plus, had, plus zero. Plus, you've plus had episode ten zero. episodes of us talking to each other. That's ah. like, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> That's right. This has just been the we all fuen, fuendos talk. Yes, this has been this has been friends talking the podcast. You know brought what the to crazy you in thing part is too? by viewers like you. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it, it doesn't sound like that much. We made 10 episodes, 11 if you count zero kind of thing. It's mm. like, cool, we finally hit double digits. But I was looking at the YouTube channel today, and episode zero was almost six months ago. We've been doing this for almost half a year. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. Wait. Whoa. Really? <laughs> yeah, like, add an episode every two weeks, and the occasional missed week yeah <laughs> that's two episodes a month so for 10 episodes that's like five and a bit months no oh. oh my gosh that's, that that's crazy to think about right ghk has been a thing for almost half a year well crazy crazy hard to hard to believe that's right. heckin insane M my brain can't can't fathom it it goes around and around mm -hmm. in circles and for all of you that stuck around for the past half a year, thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you, you, thank you. Big thank you, thank kindliness. You. That wasn't a word, but you know what? It is now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a word now. You will suffer me. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little <laughs> ominous there, aren't I? <laughs> I was thinking about Aragorn, and I was like, mm. well, because in my head I was like, mm, I'm suffering. Like, I <laughs> couldn't get that oh. word out, and then immediately just thought, Aragorn, you will suffer me, and then I was like, alright. Oh, Come okay. Alright, Ar 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 Aragorn as in as in Lord of the Rings, not yes. not Aragorn, the blue the blue dragon novel. That yeah. Oh, the dra Dragon Star Wars? <laughs> dragon <laughs> Star Wars? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. There's some the there are some frightening parallels if you look at that book series in Star Wars. <laughs> just Oh saying. no, yeah, like at the just beginning saying. It's just like Lady being chased with the artifact and then sending it off to the Chosen One while being yeah. captured yeah. by tall, dark, mysterious figure. Yeah. The trilogy to be concluded in book four. I hate that. I hate that series. I love how you didn't read book four out of spite. <laughs> out of spite. Out of principle. The fact that it was marketed as the trilogy and then the end of book three said to be concluded in book four. Listen, what kind of trilogy is this? They can't count. Listen, exactly. I get it though. I think he had. I don't know if I like read this in notes or if I had just like put this together in my brain. But like, I think by the time he got to the end of the second book, and he was, yeah, I think by the time he got to, to the end of the second book, he was like, "There's too much left. There's too much to put in a third book." Oh wait, no, or maybe it was no. He was towards the end of book three. As he was finishing up book three, or he was writing through book three, he goes, I can't put all of this in the final novel. Like, I'm going to have to make a fourth. Because I'll either cut corners, like too many corners, or I have to extend it. And then, you know what? It was okay. The ending was mediocre at best. Could have had a better <laughs> ending. So It is, no, no, ah. it is the principle behind it. I actually, I honestly would have been less upset if they went and made, like, if they did the Harry Potter thing and was like, Book three, part two. Like, just uh, the wording of there being a book four in a trilogy. I don't know why that made me so irrationally upset. <laughs> just molding at the bookstore. <laughs> it's like, right? The four book trilogy. I remember, trilogy. <laughs> too. Because, like, I didn't... I, there was, like, one mall that was, like, relatively far when I was, like, living in dorms for school. So I don't go to the mall very often. But, like, I specifically mm -hmm. went to the bookstore to look for, like, to, to buy book three or whatever. And then I got to the end. And I just got so mad. And then, like, a couple months, or, like, whenever book four came out, I was at the mall again, and I see book four on sale, and I just got so mad in front of the bookstore. <laughs> just steaming. It was like, I am an adult. I am an, I, I will not be tricked by your four-part trilogy. <laughs> I will say it did make me question if I really knew the definition of the, of trilogy. Like I sat there and went, but, 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 tr but three. three, try, try, mm -hmm. yeah, three. but, but three, trilogy. but now mm -hmm. four. Is trilogy supposed to be four books? Like I really, I really sat there and was like, am I stupid? Like, do I not know 
what a trilogy Stop. is angrily ride off on my four wheel tricycle mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh your spider but anyways we're not here for aragorn today Ar- aragon Ar- Ar- we're not I'm here, always for, here for Aragorn. Hey, GHK. Yes, hello. I'm always here for Aragorn. Welcome to GHK. Wow, we're talking all over each other. You're the one talking over me. I'm I'm expressing my love for Aragorn and also Harune is as well. So we're both on the same topic. There's only you. <laughs> this, is a, this is a fabulous kickoff to the season finale. <laughs> we crush Kai by the Kokoro. One episode at a time. <laughs> so it's actually, only been nine episodes of that. I'm quite be, used to it. It's going to be a GHK trilogy, and at the end of each season, we eliminate a member. Dun, dun, dun. It's me, isn't it? I knew it. No, no, no we were both we were both on the, on the Aragorn <laughs> thing. So like, <laughs> Kai, just just hop on the Aragorn train, and you you yeah. want to be <laughs> you wanted to be disqualified. It's fine. Yeah, Kai, get with the game. Let's let's. Let's be real here. It's gonna be me. If we go by viewer <laughs> choice, viewers are all here for the girl VM and the Harune. Let's be real. Viewers, now put your cast your votes into chat. <laughs> cast your votes. <laughs> Throw Which in the survivor name right doesn't now. get to stay on the island. It's it's VTuber Survivor. That's right. Uh, One of us won't make it back. That's next a great season. idea, Kai. Thank you. You could you could have just said my name. You didn't have to say one of us. Well, Kai, Kai was the one who chose to to make this into VTuber Survivor. Uh, it's all based on his suggestions. Yep. Man, I can't wait for season two when you guys bully somebody else. <laughs> else, uh, else we just bully me and Haru will bully each other <gasps> with love. With love. Yay! Ski 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 ski. ski ski This world is a cold and unfair place. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's, there's no, plenty of choo choo choos and ski ski skis out there for you. But that being so said, we must. my coconut milk. At least it's not <laughs> Coke Zero. But anyway! Hey. But anyway! Um. <laughs> sorry, drink your coconut milk. Uh, Speaking of which, actually, Kai, do you want to go first today? Mm-hmm. Me? Yeah. As like. Ra- I feel like just for it to come full circle, right? To wrap up. As the season finale of GHK, we should start backwards. That okay, seems appropriate. well then, I've I've got a story to tell. Okay, I'm ready um, for story. I love stories. Yeah. So, actually, this kind of relates to very recent happenings. But uh, for those of that for those of you that didn't know, very recently we just had the uh, Nintendo Showcase and also BlizzCon, which are both uh, right. Yes. Kind of big, kind of showcases conventions dedicated to certain video game companies Mm -hmm. and all that and um going through twitter and all that i saw a lot of people like lamenting over the fact that they could not go to conventions this year and i thought wow we should talk about conventions (laughs) but then i thought i feel like we've talked about conventions before so i had to like look up against our old episodes Conventions have never actually formally been a topic, but Wait. we just keep segueing into conventions. Wait, we've never we've never like had a convention topic. No, it's like we we had a uh, we well, had like, talks. No, about, I had been like, like talking about like meeting people IRL that you've known online before. Oh, like a VTuber exactly. convention that was that was a topic that was one of your yeah. Yeah. those were topics, those were segues those were segues for other topics officially, but because of how much we have talked about conventions in the past. I was like, how can I, how can I take this idea and 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 salvage what I can from it? I don't want to have to think of something else. Um. So because this is episode ten, we are nearing or nearing. We this is the end of season one. Hmm. I was like, let's end things with a bit of a bang. I'm like, uh, convention bang convention <laughs> festivals. Matsuri da. We are talking about festivals. Yeah, Matsuri. Nice. Oh, yes. Matsuri. I mean, by definition, I, I can re- I can see the comments already. Everyone's gonna give me shit for this, but um, <laughs> you know, a festival is not quite the same as a convention. So I was hoping to hear some maybe pleasant memories of festivals you've been to. Could be local ones, could be international ones. Back when festivals were still a thing, you know, when traveling was an option, etc., etc. Mm-hmm. You know. It could be like those. It could be like the natsumatsuris you see in anime. It could be like the stalls, the food, 
the fireworks, or it could be some other festival that you know of and have attended. Oh, I haven't thought about festivals in a long, long time because mm-hmm. there aren't really like festivals around, especially like really? in the yeah around States? here either. Not really. That's oh, not really we, a thing. We have nope. like we have like three or four festivals a year, and I usually go to like one or two of them. Yeah, what? we don't have mm-hmm. really festivals here. Oh, oh. I did. I did go to one festival though, so it's, it's it's kind of an easy answer for me. Um, I mean that could work. Yeah, if you've like just participated in some sort of fest somewhere mm. else, some other time, it could be in the past. Yes, when I was a tiny Haudenosaunee, I uh, was overseas in Taiwan, and mm-hmm. I so like um, for Lunar New Year, mm-hmm. it's actually not just celebrated for one day it's celebrated for like weeks Mm -hmm. and there are different things that happen at each like as time goes on within the lunar new year celebration like after a certain number of days or a certain number of weeks or whatever you do one thing and then like another portion sort of rounds it out and things like that and so like to wrap up the lunar new year celebration it generally ends with a lantern festival which Mm. um Sort of. Why are you looking away like that? <laughs> oh, <You're> like, <laughs> wow, Kai just, like, just checked just, out. He just straight up was just like. Mm, I was. No, I was checking I my audacity. I was checking oh, the recording okay. of my audacity. Sorry, it's on the was, other uh-huh, monitor. I thought you like did it. Nice cover. You had like a nice bad, cover, Kai. I thought no, you had like got, a bad my other monitors. experience. I'm so sorry. I did. My other monitor's on uh, this side of the of of the recording studio, so I was checking something on the other monitor. I just thought you were so done with lantern festivals. I'm like, oh man, have I have I mentioned something bad? Like, but uh, no, I'm sorry, (laughs) sorry about that. But um, yeah, I think it was towards the end of February was the lantern festival, and um, what from what I remember, so I was like six. I was a tiny. I was a tiny Renee. Um, so from what I remember, I equate it to being kind of like a, like, the ice sculpture Mm -hmm. festivals or not. I mean, I can't really call them festivals, but like, um, when you go to like these, these ice sculpture or even like sand sculpture, sand castle, like competitions or whatever, where you like walk around and you get to see these like really like extravagant ice sculptures or people who have, you know, are like sand masters and, and, and they craft these like beautiful things. The Lantern Festival was kind of the same as that. So it was like these huge structures of lights um, that they've somehow constructed together to be like various huge, like monolithic things. Um, not monolithic. Mono, monolith? Is that the right word? I don't remember. Anyway, but just like these, these giant displays um i remember like a giant dragon all lit up um i remember a a giant lantern i remember like a big like a gate of some sort maybe like a torty or something but i'd be surprised if that were in taiwan but anyway um but it was cold and uh, i didn't even know it was a festival like i was just like oh hey there's like a thing going on cool and that was where I bought my first pretty like, colors, pretty lights. Basically, I was just like, "Ooh, why are we here?" Noises. I see, I see bright things. Um, and that was where I bought my first like, um, it looked almost like a Sailor Moon wand sort of thing. Like oh, you know how they nice. go from the, yeah, from yeah. their little compacts to the wand thing. It's to have yeah. like a bauble around it, and when you push the button, it like lights up and spins on the inside. I think I still, <laughs> I think I had it for like ten years after. I had I kept it for I, a really, I know exactly. really really long time. I know exactly what you're talking about <laughs> i've was... seen i've i've had one of those too as a kid i remember yes! this yes that was like the the one and only light up thing i had ever bought in my life or was allowed to buy i had <laughs> never i had never had like light up toys like that before mm-hmm. um so that's those are my like big memories from the lantern festival so it really actually wasn't until i did a lunar new year uh collab stream with uh, Momiji and who was the VTuber of festivals and um, that's when I realized I was like oh 
I was there for that. I was there for a for a lantern festival. I didn't even know it. I, I didn't even know I had ever attended a festival. Ah. But yeah, that's that's my memory. That's what I got. My memory. I see. I see. Mm. Nice. Nice. Mm-hmm. Let's see for mine. Um. Oh, I remember. So, shortly after I had moved to Japan, um, mm-hmm. I went to go like okay so the way that the company worked is like you had training groups and our group was actually quite small most of the time they had larger size ones but ours was only like four people and we got pretty close to each other while we were doing our training and such so like i think it was either the first or second weekend that we had finished our training and like all our school stuff we're like hey let's meet up in nagoya and so we met up in nagoya and we went down we went to like sakai which is the the fancy shopping area, that's where all the big fancy department stores are. And Whoa. yeah, it's a it's a really cool street, uh, big buildings and everything. And we noticed that everything was like sealed off for the roads for cars. And normally cars could drive up and down. Um, and it turned out, so Nagoya every year has this really big festival event called Domatsuri. Domatsuri. And do, do means like to dance. <gasps> oh! So, Domatsuri is the like the cheer dancing. Oh, like cheer squad it. dancing? Kind of. Hang on a sec. It's, it's, That's I'm going to look so it up really quick. That's so cute. Oh my gosh. But it was really cool because you had a whole bunch of people. Yeah. Nippon Domanaka Matsuri. Domatsuri for short is the largest dance festival in the Chubu region. And they have dancers from all over Japan and even abroad gather in Nagoya and perform the dances. And they're the types that they have, like, really big flags. And it's it's so cool. Almost like a color guard? It's kind of like a color guard. I'm just trying to look up what the name of it is. There's a type of... uh, There's an anime... That is about this type of dance style. Oh, that's so cool. What is it called? You stumbled upon an international festival. How how sick is that? (laughs) Right? It was so cool. Like, such cool performances. And I went back, like, that year I didn't even have, like, a phone set up yet. Oh, no! Um, And I was just, like, so overwhelmed by how cool it was the next year i actually had like my my camera set up and i went and saw it but what's the name of the type of oh, i'm trying to look up the type of dance because it's really really cool <laughs> oh while like, you're you, you, you said cheer i was thinking yosakoi. Of, like, the... yosakoi 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 here let me let me yosakoi, yosakoi. that's the type of dance cool. that's the type of dance we're all we're all like we're all checking right now Harune, i'm going Everyone to look chat. over here to okay. my other <laughs> to uh, my other you, monitors so time. i can look this up if you've seen hana yamata that one's hana on yamata. about that's about yosakoi <gasps> oh, oh. <gasps> that's so, so cute yeah so oh, yosakoi familiar though i don't think i ever finished this series Yosakoi, like, I have... Uh, there's <clears> some <throat> videos if you look up Yosakoi, but, like, one of the ones I remember that was just insanely cool was one that was themed about probably, like, the Warring States period one. It was, like, a battle victory story, and the way that the Yosakoi works is you have, like, this entire dance troupe that's, like, ranging from 10 to 50 people, and then you have the narrator that stands off to the side in the booth and is, like, telling very dramatically in Japanese along with the music explaining the story, or making the calls. Mm -hmm. Um, And this one, they had, like, the horses. So they had girls that were were dressed up, like, had stuff to indicate that they're the horses. Mm -hmm. And they had the (laughs) archery men and everything, and, like, the the foot troops and stuff. And I remember at one point, they, the main archer king, like, prince guy, shoots an arrow, and as it goes, like, one person's carrying the arrow, and as it goes past everybody, they flip their flags over, and it's a different color. Ooh. Ooh. And so it was really cool, and then it hits the target, and they all celebrate, and all of a sudden, everybody's outfit completely changes. Oh my gosh, what? It was like an outfit transformation <gasps> thing. 
Um, oh, they all had, yeah, like, like the fall away outfits. Oh, yeah, those are yeah, so and it was cool, all like though. that, but it was their their um, hakama, not their hakama, the jacket on top, the hapi on top. Um, it was lined, so mm. there were, they did a quick change with it, and all of their outfits suddenly changed, and you're just like, whoa, that's so cool. This is oh my so gosh. cool. That sounds so cool. Oh, my oh gosh. it was really fun. It was so cool to see. Like I think when when Domatsuri happened the second year, when I was actually prepared for it. Um, I was there for like, I want to say six hours. I just oh sat outside and I was oh watching because they have the performance stage. They have a main stage area where every troop goes and does their full performance in the stage style. And then they also have a parade style dance performance <gasps> with like floats and walking styles and stuff. And so I caught both of those the next year and it was so cool. Oh, I was even thinking the first one sounded like it would be parade style, but you're saying like there's a, a separate thing. No, they thing have a parade. static stage performance version, and then they oh. have a parade walking version. That is absolutely delightful. I would that love to so see cool. that. It was so right? cool. They had like a dance troupe from Hokkaido that came, and I actually found out from a friend of mine that while I was living in Japan. Mm -hmm. A friend of hers that I wound up meeting after I moved back to Canada was also in Japan, and I barely missed her because she was performing Yosakoi, and they actually went to Nagoya. Oh my gosh! So like, so she she was an she exchange was student, and she joined she joined Yosakoi, and she was there during I think during the first year, but I wasn't I didn't know that Yosakoi was a thing, um, and so I like, and I didn't obviously I didn't know who she was. So. Right. But it was just like, after we met later, we were just like, oh my gosh! We were at the same place pretty much at the same time, even if we didn't know each other. Yep, exactly. And it was really cool. What a quinky dink. It's yeah, like, Yos Yosakoi is so cool. I'll, I'll have to find some videos to share. Yes, please do. It's so please cool. Do. I'm tempted to like and... look it up and like watch a bunch of videos after. You should, you should, you should, you should. You'll love it. If you if... like, yeah, so good. If anyone, if any of the viewers or ourselves find ourselves in Japan around that time, you said Nagoya? Do you remember? Nagoya in what? August. It's Nagoya August, in August. Yeah. August. There you go, viewers. End if you ever find yourself in Nagoya. Yeah. End of August. Yeah. Around the August season. Yep. And it's not, not a ticketed event. To. It's just nope, you show nope, up. You just you just show up. It's a, it's a whole performance across like uh mostly around Sakae. And then they have a stage area. They like if you go there, you can. They have stalls set up with food and stuff in the main street area, and you can see maps and stuff that explain like, oh, this is the main performance stage. This is where they will be going through. Mm. They have judging for the Yosakoi performances too. It's really good. Oh my goodness, so that cool. sounds awesome! It's one really day, fun. yeah, one yes. day, one day, one day, one day. I want to go back uh... again and watch watch the festival because it was so cool. Oh. I mean, with the way you sold it, I want to go see it now. I know, so we're, we're all just like, and uh, we're going to go, uh -huh. and uh -huh. we're going to go see Yosakoi, uh -huh. and uh -huh. uh, that's it. That's, 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 thanks uh -huh. for coming to the podcast. Yep, we're going to go see Please look forward to a Bye. GHK coverage of the Yosakoi <laughs> festival in Nagoya. <laughs> that would Definitely be, really happening, be 100%. so cool. I would love that. Let me go. I want to do it. I if we all have it. little keychains and we just like, like announce... Like, hi, I'm here with Girl Diem and Nimin and Aikai, and we're here to watch yeah. Yosakoi together. Yeah. We're here for Yosakoi! Yosakoi! That even sounds cool, like the word itself. Right? It's so good. Like, you know how, uh, like, Soranbushi? Hmm. Soda. Like, with all the, yeah, the with, like, the Dokushos so and stuff. So There's a the lot of sh the oh, Good job, guy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Very apt. Very good. Good job. Bye bye show. Bye bye, bye, bye show. show. Um, there's a lot of shout chants like that that happen with it as well. So you'll have like one of the, the like the call leader will shout "Dokoi show" and then you'll have like everybody else shout it back at them in the dance troupe. It's so good. Oh, that's so. Oh my god. I mean, they so they also chant to uh, fireworks, don't they? Um. Like, I, I feel like a lot of Japanese I, of those, like, summary events has a lot of shouting and chanting to it, doesn't it? Um, normally fireworks? at a festival, the fireworks, there isn't really chanting involved. Really? It's just like, wow, fireworks. The only chant is, like, wow! Tamaya. No. But, man, anime lied to me. All right, cool, thanks. <laughs> Maybe it's only 
specific to one region? Might be a specific region or a specific festival that has it. <laughs> Anime's lied to me. I don't know what's real anymore. Well, I mean, if you well, thought you anime, are anime was reality. But he is, but, but he is anime. We, we're VTubers. We are anime. <laughs> and if you thought we were reality, boy, do you have another think coming. <laughs> evil evil laugh time? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Speaking of which, Kai, it is your turn. What is your Matsuri memory? Yes. Uh, well, I I honestly thought like more cities would have it. Apparently, apparently my city's just got more than the average. I wasn't well, expecting you guys to pull out memories from like, you know, way back different when, countries kind of thing, in different countries that it Look look um, at Kai living in an international city where they actually like respect other people's heritage. Wow. Wow. Sure. <laughs> I mean, with what Hud and I brought up about like Taiwan and all that, that does remind me of like lantern festivals around like the Chinese New Year time, mm. lion dance festivals. Yes, da, 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 da. lion dance like, is my favorite. Hmm? Imagine like for the, for the lantern ones here. Imagine like it's Halloween where all the kids go out trick or treating, hmm. but instead of going out in like Halloween costumes, they all dress up in like uh little. Chinese like Chinese style clothing, Chinese like Chinese dresses. But it's a cold lot of them outside. Really silken and like some of them even had like fur on it, fur trim. <gasps> Ooh, um, that's fancy. Quite often red because like huh. red clothing is supposed to like indicate good luck. Mm-hmm. There's some folklore involving how the festival is meant to scare off the monster of bad luck and the monster scared of loud noises and the color red. So oh. everybody goes out to celebrate mm. dressed in red. Interesting. So we're just trying and... to frighten Santa. Mm-hmm. <laughs> past, past and his it's time. often like it's often like a kid's activity to make little paper lanterns they carry around. Mm-hmm. So you would have like just like rows and rows of kids walking down the street carrying these little lanterns and just like at night it's like all lit up. You got a little parade of lights going down the streets, and it's really nice. And usually you give, like, little sweets to the kids anyways kind of thing. Um, For the lion dance ones, for anyone that doesn't know what a lion dance is, it's, again, another, like, Chinese tradition where you would have multiple people get um, into a big, big costume that is vaguely lion shaped i will admit it is it's, kind of uh it's very exaggerated it's, it's, for it's, us. if a mountain those. lion were a slinky huh? yes exactly so you would have usually the head controlled by one person and like the rest of the body like just a string of people behind them and they were all just, hunched like, over <laughs> exactly it's like if, if you imagine what a cartoon like horse disguise is like yeah two people yeah, yeah, dressed yeah, yeah, like yeah. a horse kind of like that and they would dance and there would usually be like a line of people playing like drums mm. like to give them a beat and actually if you go to like a street full of stores and restaurants the interesting thing is you will find that all of them or a lot of them in will tie up a head of lettuce lettuce and then string the lettuce up in front of their store's main door hmm. i remember this when i and, was in taiwan i mean you could definitely see under the costume so you know what the line's doing but like they'll have like one person basically acrobat their way up onto another person's shoulder to like show the lion standing on its hind legs mm-hmm. and they'll go up like almost two stories to like grab the head of lettuce in the lion's mouth and supposedly if a store feeds the lion, which is really just the dude tearing up the cabbage and like throwing, yeah, throwing it, it out of its mouth. <laughs> exactly, exactly. If they feed the lion, that blesses the store with like good luck. Hmm. So that's usually like a really big event and all, everyone lines up to like watch it and all that. But um, aside from that, if we're talking more like traditional festivals with like food stalls and games and what you would typically see in like anime... We do have two styles, kind of. I feel like it's what the Asians do, and then what, what the every other do. community puts together in response to the, the Asians' party. Like, well, the Asians get a party. We want a party. 
But um, we usually have like night markets and night festivals, so it's like just... oh no, I'm jealous. Night markets. Yeah, we don't have night markets exactly. here. Bruh. There's like a big, big mall with like a big, big mall parking lot, and they would have like police basically block off the whole intersection that the mall takes up, so it spills out onto the streets, and you just get like rows and rows and rows of like food stalls and games. You get takoyaki. You get all kinds of things. You get Taiwan like. Stinky tofu, you Yay! get like bubble tea, you like milk tea in bags. Of course, you get like of fresh course, coconut. anything with milk in it's gonna be bagged in Canada. Uh, what well, the not heck? my spot, my spot's different. Uh, we don't have bagged milk here. Oh, okay, you get like, yeah, you get like grilled, grilled squid, grilled corn on the <gasps> co- like cob. You squid get just like sickles. all sorts of things. Usually, there's like that one freak stall at the back that's just like cricket hamburger, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> Have you had it? You I should. Have. Yes. How was how it? Was I've, had, I've had bar- I've had barbecued crickets and how, it's, how are uh, they? Honestly, just like kind of crispy. Would you go back for seconds? Mm, they weren't like that great. I probably <laughs> wouldn't spend money on seconds, but if someone gave it to me, I'd eat it. That's fair. I see. I see. I, think like, I wouldn't go out rating. of my way to get seconds. Hmm. But then, like. This usually happens in the summer, and it's like, we usually have two or three of these, like, Asian night markets. But then, like, everyone else, the non-Asians, they're like, we want a party. So then, like, in between them, they would tuck just, like, rib vest. Yeah. They they call it rib vest, but they'll have, like, all sorts of things aside from ribs. But, like, you'll just get, like, rows and rows and rows of all these food trucks that have their own way of doing ribs. Ooh. And then, like, rows and rows and rows of food trucks that do other foods you get like blooming onions you get cotton candy you get like wow. macaroni and cheese like deep fried macaroni and cheese balls uh, you get all this like essentially like western food is how my parents call it you get like the, the, yeah the, that sounds right the asian festival and then the western food festival <laughs> yeah and like that usually happens during the day it's like hot out the sun's out there's like you know, ice cream trucks, this and that. Mm. And the Asian ones always happen at night. Yes, that's right. So. In in true Asian fashion. Actually, you did remind me. I have gone to a couple other... Well, no, I think I've gone to the same festival twice. I just... It's not I've called gone to the beer festival. fests. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, um... Those are fun. They do sound like fun. But th- I had forgotten about them because they aren't called festivals. Or at least mm-hmm. not... Um... Not like in the title, but I guess it's technically considered a, a like a summer festival. But it's it's an arts, food and music festival. Mm. Um, Ooh. I would give it the I would give it its proper name, but I don't I, I don't want to dox myself. <laughs> yeah, so, don't um, dox, don't dox. Exactly, I'm like holding back because like the our festivals have names too, and I'm just like I'm gonna give it generic name. Rib there, Fest. We, there we go. That's it. But um, the last time I went, so it's like it's got a bunch of carnival rides. It has food trucks. Um, and it has stalls for um, local artists all over the state and even sometimes out of the state. Sometimes we've had um, people come in from, from Canada um, yeah, cool. to sell their wares, whether it's um, like handcrafted items. Like that's where I bought my fountain pen was this this guy who had a stall of like handcrafted like pens and uh, the like. Um, nice. Actual art like um, like paintings some wire sculptures, handmade jewelry, photography. Um, and the last time I went, um, I actually ran into my cousin who was there with a couple of other friends and we all um, lined up. So they also have like, so I said food, arts, and music, right? So they um, have a couple of different stages um, at different sides of the festival and it's an all weekend thing um so it's like starts like in mid-afternoon i think and it goes like all night and then they do that for i think like a friday saturday oh a thursday friday saturday i think or maybe they do friday saturday sunday i don't remember because it's been a while but um but yeah so they have um music stages at like i'm gonna assume the cardinal points um of the festival and the last time I went, I ran into my cousin, and we went to go <laughs> see Third Eye Blind, who just <gasps> happened to be there playing. Um, 
and we got like a pretty good area and uh we just jammed a i don't know what's the song called jumper yeah yes we jammed out to jumper that's a very fond memory of mine nice but I, once nice. again i forgot i forgot that was a festival i because we don't we don't call it that we just call it by I the mean, name we don't like typically think of it as like a like when i think of a festival i usually don't consider it to be like something that you have to pay money to get into right mm-hmm. which this so, one you definitely wait no yeah, i don't think you like, had to like, actually you just had to pay for beer fast here you have to pay to get in Oof. and yeah they have like we have various events and stuff that'll happen downtown and it's all like oh you have to pay to get in and yeah so i don't really consider those festivals because like a festival for me is usually like you show up and then you spend your money not uh Mm -hmm. there's no the other way not right uh... (laughs) yeah i think this one you didn't have to pay to get in you just had to pay for concessions and any any arts that you that you bought yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah but parking is a bear sometimes you have to pay for parking and that stinks yep that's no fun but oh yeah but yeah. Night market, be prepared to park like three blocks away. Or you can live mm. close to the night market and just walk there. Yeah, why don't you oh. just do that way, forehead? I will move. I will move. <laughs> be- thank you for the advice. You're, you're, yes, welcome. you're welcome. You're welcome. We're just Pack here. up and move. We're just here pre- presenting you with the best solutions. Uh huh. You're uh-huh. welcome. GHK Radio at its finest. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. <laughs> We're helpers. All of us are helpers here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't call myself a virtual personal assistant for nothing. I tell you to pack up true, and move, you do true. it. True, That's Haune. <laughs> it's Haune. It's me. It's Haune. It's That's Haune. Haune. Haune's mm-hmm. personal assistant. Mm-hmm. I tell you to move, you move. Most yeah. lucrative idea. Yeah. Yeah, I just it, it's it's a fond memory of mine. Like we we would park in like kind of like a very industrial neighborhood, so it's all like companies and stuff with like big big parking lots and just like all these streams of people parking super far away cutting through parking lots you just see like it it's it's like the world's calmest zombie movie everyone's just like walking like (laughs) snaking through the parking lots kind of thing and then like going into this like back alley between two companies to like the main road and then like across it you see utopia you see all these like tented areas you see like you know, grilled mm-hmm. lamb skewers. You see, like those little cups with the corn and the cheese. I don't know what I don't know what they're called, but they're really good. What? Corn and cheese. Know, it's... Corn and cheese. Yeah, it's like they they throw corn and then cheese on a on like a skillet. What? And the cheese melts, what? and then they just like you get goopy goopy cheese and corn in a cup, and it's really good. I mean, I like corn, but I've never yeah. heard of corn and cheese. I have not either. I've had creamed corn. Creamed corn is nice. Ooh. Creamed corn is nice too, yes. Mama Uya oh. makes some really good creamed corn soup, and now I want. I would like to try it too, please. Yes, please. Send, Uya, send it to Uya, Canada, please. Thank you. Uya, if you're okay. listening, tell your tell Mama Uya to make me some creamed corn soup, please. <laughs> I will pay please for make, it. Please make make it for Hawuni. Please. I found it. Apparently, it is a Korean dish known as an anju, meaning it is a dish best served with alcohol. Oh, that, sounds, is, that, that does sound accurate. Yeah, cheese. It is called corn cheese, which is corn, sweet corn and mozzarella cheese. Yep. Mm-hmm. What What a very apt name. Mm-hmm. It is corn cheese. Oh, my. I'm looking at the pictures and I want it now, so I'm just going to stop looking. I want it too. You're oh. lactose and ta will win. I know. It's fine. Just suffer for a little bit. <laughs> I don't know, man. My sufferings, I don't know. If I were to, like, eat that while I'm out and about, that would just ruin my night. You know what I mean? Like Probably. So that's why you eat it just before you're, like, going home. <laughs> I take it with me home. Yeah, there you go. There you go. And then you start eating it when it's, like, still pretty warm, but you're, like, 90% of the way home. I could nuke it. It's okay. Yeah, that too, that too. Is okay. VTubers can't get gassy. They're like idols. <laughs> I'm alone on this? Alright, never mind. Hey, girl DM, you have a topic, right? Sorry, you want to repeat what you just said? Hey, girl DM, you have a topic, right? No, no, just just before that. Just before that. I'm sorry. Season finale. <laughs> uh, let's oh, see. Um, true. Topic. 
topic, topic. Ah. Uh, I can go, if if you if you prefer, yeah, I go. My, I go next. I my my topic left my brain. Oh no! Okay, oh. then I'll give you plenty of time to <laughs> give you plenty of time gone. to recall it. Alrighty. Thank you. Yes, bokeh. Well, I was kind of on the same train as Kai, just in terms of like, since it's the season finale, wanted to go out with a bang. Um, mm -hmm. but I took a very different approach. Um, it's so very coincidental that our season finale season finale lines up with something monumentous that has happened recently and i'm sure you've all heard of it but maybe don't know much of the details this is about the mars rover landing <gasps> yes yay so yes 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 yeah 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 so i have with me i like actually took time to make notes today which Ooh. i hadn't been able to do for the last couple episodes so i'm proud of myself i went all in on this so we are going back to space into space revisiting space. the fart eating rocks the fart eating rocks of mars are you just stuck on farts today kai a little bit that's what i thought so kai's 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 a little blocked up oh my god <laughs> <laughs> oh my god okay <laughs> going out with a bang are you kai <laughs> more like a toot more like a toot kai you know what you need in your life some fiber Beans. <laughs> oh my god. I, I was gonna say some Metamucil, but Oh that too, Metamucil that's, too. That's some fiber. Or or um um psyllium husks. What is that? Um it is a fiber stuff that you can put into your your drinks. Psyllium Whoa husks. Is it like a stick? It, so it's it's the outside part of uh, it's the husk of a plantago plant. Yep, I know exactly what that is. I don't. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> um, it's the main active ingredient in Metamucil. Ooh! Oh. You can just order straight to the, the husks source. themselves. Yeah, you can order the husks themselves uh, separately. Wow! And yeah, it helps. Um, it's it's really good for if you need to poop. If you're being a Kai right now, <laughs> got it. She's just helping a bro out. I'm helping you out. <laughs> Listen, you we're, all, to... we're all well, virtual thank personal you, assistants. BM. You're welcome. If you're feeling... You can go to Trader Joe's and get... Yeah. get uh, it's called The Secrets of the, C the Cilium, and it's got, like, cool Egyptian artwork on the outside of the container. Ooh. We don't have a Trader Joe's here, but all right. Bruh. You can... Find, find a local a market. Joe's. Yes, find a local market. Or just get Metamucil. <laughs> That, that, yeah, that's an option. That's a li that's a little bit easier for me. <laughs> Ooh, let's see. It's mm. it can pass through the small intestine without being completely broken down or absorbed. It comes instead. It absorbs water and becomes a viscous compound that benefits constipation, diarrhea, blood sugar, blood pressure, cholesterol, and weight loss. Wait, constipation and diarrhea? Yep, it's like an upper and a, a downer. <laughs> so it's yep. Fix it all. It, it's like balancing everything out for you. Oh my goodness. So it just, it literally just fixes whatever the heck's wrong with your stomach. Whatever it may be. Yep. Yep. It's it just, annoying. it becomes, if you've, if you've never seen it before, um, it looks like kind of like a dry, it's the husk of a seed. So it's like the, the little thin fibrous section that hmm. covers the seed to protect it. Hmm. But mm -hmm. it's really weird because like I've, I've messed with it before cause we have it. Uh, <laughs> and if you mix it with water, it does kind of the thing that like chia seeds do oh. where it makes, it absorbs the water and it makes kind of this barrier thing with it. But what winds up happening with the psyllium husk ones is it kind of, it becomes like slime. Oh no. Thick oh. water. Yeah. Like very thick. It doesn't taste like anything either, so it's just like oh. thick water slime. Oh and, my god! Um, it's pretty. That's the worst. <laughs> I mean, no, it's actually okay. Just trust me on this. The texture, like, it looks terrible, but it's actually like, you know, to quote Lion King, slimy yet satisfying. Huh? I'm intrigued now. <laughs> yeah, and I'm it intrigued. Says it's, it's it's handy, is what it says. Wait, we... it's handy. <laughs> it's handy. It's handy. <laughs> It fixes all you got. Oh my goodness! Yeah, it, it it also could be good for your heart. It appears to be good for your heart. I believe it. 
I believe it, because then you aren't panicking about whatever state your tummy's in. <laughs> yes. You know. But, yeah, I, I love how we, we went from the Mars rover landing to, <laughs> to, <have> tum <laughs> <laughs> to tummy issues. You Everybody gotta love it here. poops. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> poops. Everybody. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So, um, <laughs> Mars, Mars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, on July 30th, 2020, at 4.50 a.m. PDT or 7.50 a.m. EDT, NASA launched the rover Perseverance from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida, where it began its 292.5 million mile journey to Mars until finally landing on February 18th. So the day in which we are recording this, it's been three days? Wow. Yes. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yes. So February 18th, 2021 at 3.55 p.m. EST. Hmm. Yay! So it took a real heck of a long time. It took about yes, six months. Yes, it did. To get to, to get to uh, Mars. That's a trek. I, I feel like... Because I do remember what was going on in the summer, and um, we had... Wasn't that the year uh, SpaceX did their, their big launch? I... Maybe? I feel like that's what I was doing at that time. I'm really bad at dates. That's, oh, I'm bad at what? dates, too. But I do remember a recent summer watching the, the SpaceX launch. Yeah, um, I remember watching the SpaceX launch. But... Shout out to my high school classmate that's that was part of that team, by the way. <laughs> but um, Hey, that's awesome! Hey, I know, nice. isn't it cool? I'm so proud of them. Heckin', heckin' genius. Mm -hmm. um, but... Uh, but um, I do remember that there was like a NASA event not too long after, and I don't know if it got as much coverage. I do recall that. I feel like I could be totally wrong. Maybe they didn't broadcast it at all, but I feel like they would have. But I feel it in my in my bones that that was a thing. That's all mm -hmm. I remember. But anyway, yes, according to the official NASA website, Perseverance's mission is to search quotes. Search for signs of ancient microbial microbial life, which will advance NASA's quest to explore the past um, habitality habit habitability of Mars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These are words. Um, the rover has a drill to co to collect core samples of Martian rock and soil, then store them in sealed tubes for pickup by a future mission that would ferry them back to Earth for detailed mm -hmm. analysis. So that's from the actual like mission statement on the NASA website as to what the heck mm -hmm. Perseverance is doing out there. Um, mm -hmm. So, it's I guess it's no surprise. We're always still looking for, first off, life on Mars, or is, was life, did, what? Was there mm -hmm. ever life on Mars, number one? Number two, is it habitable for future life? Like, could we yes. take Mars as it is right now and make it our second colony, you know? Would you live on Mars? Um, no, I don't think so. Um, I think it's more important to care about the planet that we live on instead of thinking about ways to run away from our problems. Well, we don't have to run away from the Earth. We could just make it into the next, like, garbage dump. But, like, see, that's... I think we should the care Earth for where landfill. we live. I feel like we should care about where we live currently instead of trying to search for a second home, you know? <laughs> But um, it's home away from home, you know. <laughs> but Papa Rene, Papa Rene was like, "Yeah, I'd live on Mars." <laughs> and I was like, I was kind of shocked. I was like, "Really? Oh, really? You would?" He goes, "Wouldn't surprise me if we came from Mars." And I said, like, "That's total two totally different sentences." I which yep, one? That is which one? <laughs> but uh, I, I mean, both. I I agree with your sentiment of wanting to like take care of our number one Earth more oh. than finding a second home for hmm. that reason. But I mean. If we're talking, like, population, like, the growing population and all that, I feel like having more space for more people would also, you know, it's That's a worthy true. thing to look into for NASA, right? Like, there's right. other reasons to look for a second planet. Right. And we might I... have new resources hmm. on that planet. We might have, you know, more Might lessen the damage on Earth. more people. Exactly. We wouldn't need as much, like, we wouldn't have to worry so much about, like, you know population and all that on one planet if we could split it into two hmm. but um naturally like using earth for all that it's worth and then bail it like jumping <laughs> ship is, 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 not, is it that's not as 
idea. It's like one of my sci-fi novels. <laughs> oh my gosh. But really though, like how how sci-fi does this get? Except this is this is this is what we're living through. Like this is what a time right. to be alive, you know? Right? Mm -hmm. What an interesting mm -hmm. timeline. So Perseverance landed and will be exploring in and around Jezero Jezero? Jezero crater. Mm -hmm. J-E-Z-E-R-O. Um at a whopping 0 0.1 miles per hour, which I was like, oh my god, this poor thing be 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 dragon. But apparently it's three times faster than the previous rovers. Yeah, yeah, the previous rovers did not have <laughs> oh, did not have speed. Oh my goodness. Mm. So point listeners, viewers, whichever ones. Remember this 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 zero point one miles per hour. Just just think about that. Um I don't know. Cracks me up. That's like hmm. the mm -hmm. speed of R2D2, if not slower. Right? <laughs> I don't know. R2D2 can make it downstairs pretty quickly. That's right. He can waddle at at, at, at great speeds. Um, yes, he can. <laughs> so Jezero Crater was a um was a lake three point nine billion years ago. Um, and as well as so that's 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 why they chose that particular crater it's because it was actually a lake way back when mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um so um that's sort of the starting point for perseverance's journey um as well as setting down its friend ingenuity the first helicopter ever did we put on mars i say helicopter but it's it's kind of like a, a drone mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. probably a bit bigger than a drone i didn't really get a good grasp on its size mm -hmm. but um you know, the, the the idea is just that they're going to have something with spinny blades that can fly on Mars. Yes. And that's exciting yes. as heck. Um, so Ingenuity's task will be, um, will really be to just test to see if it can survive the harsh temperatures of the planet. And um, if it's capable of, of charging itself using the solar panels that they put on it. Mm -hmm. um, because that's just like a next step in like scientific exploration and just the the extent of what we can do on mm -hmm. another planet it's just exciting um meanwhile perseverance's second passenger moxie or the mars oxygen in uh, in situ s-i-t-u or yeah i think i spelled yeah i don't know what in situ i-n mm -hmm. dash s-i-t-u resource utilization experiment We'll be working to see if it can convert the carbon dioxide on Mars to oxygen once again. Once again, just reaffirming that, you know, their goal is not only to see if there was life on Mars, but if it can be habitable, ha hospitable mm -hmm. to future life, right? If they could, imagine, if we could, it's like the Martian all over again. If they could convert the carbon dioxide to oxygen how much we could do on that planet mm -hmm. incredible stuff incredible stuff so all in all the entire mission is, is expected to go on until the 2020 what the 2030s um more or less meaning that we won't have the martian samples that perseverance collects until we get another mission out there specifically to gather those samples and to bring them back so mm -hmm. it's it's a commitment but definitely a commitment that everyone's excited for um, also, as a, we're not the only ones that have rovers out there, or, well, we're the only one that land a rover right now, but um, I think I read that there's there's two other craft, I like, near Mars. One's Chinese, and I think they're thinking about, they're, they're planning to land their craft in May, I think? I didn't write this down. And then there was another one that I have unfortunately forgotten. But yeah, so we're not we're not the only ones working for this right now. It seems like other countries have similar ideas. Um, so it would be great if we could all work together and see what we come up with, like together as a as a world team, but uh who knows? We'll see where that brings us. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Big excite in the world of science and space exploration. And I figured that's how we would, how I would close out season one. Yeah. With a big, big, with big, big news. Girl DM, big, did big your news. topic return? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh you know what? Um, what is 
something that you want to... Well, okay, so I'm taking a class right now. I'm taking a um, art course, online art course. Ooh. Uh, mm-hmm. I've heard of this, yep. Yeah, so because I've like felt kind of like I've hit a bit of a wall with my own artwork and I want to get past that wall, so I'm taking an online Ooh. art course right now. Um, that like kind of forces me to think outside of my what own... you're used to thinking in... yeah my own hmm. art that i've done and stuff and like how i usually color and things hmm. so it's really mm-hmm. interesting and so um if you could take any course that you wanted to what would you take oh my goodness oh my goodness um or something like a little bit more like immediate what would be what would be something right now that you would be interested in learning more about how to do I... I go ahead, Kai. Oh no, I was gonna say like you—you you sounded like you were still thinking. I could go first. Of you? No, you go right ahead. Uh, cooking. Cooking? Yeah, I've been thinking for a while now. Like, I want to sign up for more cooking classes. Hmm. Because that was something I used to do, like when I was still a young lad, or younger than I am now. I should say I'm not old yet. Shh, shut up, <laughs> Grandpa <laughs> Kai. <laughs> Grandpa Kai, eat your beans. Eat your beans. But Here's your I have, pudding. Um, I used to attend like a cooking class once a week at like the community center. Oh, and oh that's adorable. I was like the youngest one there in my like very early teens. I think I want to say I was like 13 or 14, something like that at the time. And I just remember once the instructor was like, I need someone who is brave. And nobody had an idea what, like, was going on. It's like, why would we need to be brave for a cooking class? And so they volunteered me, the, the, the youngster. And the um, the instructor basically just stuck my hand into a bin with, like, this really squishy, like, sticky paste Ugh. with, like, bits in it. Ugh. And told me to, like, you know, just, like, knead it like it's dough. Sounds and it turns good. out it was Rice Krispies. They were just like melted marshmallows with like <gasps> puff, oh, oh my gosh, I want like... Rice Krispies so bad. Oh, why they're would tasty. you do but this like, to me? The the initial shock of just like jamming my hand into a bin of like sticky, goopy, bumpy stuff. Was what? Like... How is that part of baking class? To no, mess no, it was with cooking, you. Cooking class. Cooking how class. is how was that part of cooking class? We were making Rice Krispies, and the instructor was having fun, I guess. But um. <laughs> I, I, I need I, you to I be brave. That. Stick your hand inside of this. It was not Monster Hunter. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, like I I enjoy I enjoy cooking mm. now and again. Mm. I'm sure people have seen the more disastrous results. <laughs> <laughs> not really. You've done well. They still they still remind me of salted cheesecake. <laughs> I, I just remind myself of uh, calling Kai, hey, you need to uh, measure things. You need to measure things. It's a little bit important. Oh my gosh, that's baking. like p- pendings, cookies that taste like pretzels. Oh no, you got to measure mes- stuff. You mis- it's huh. just oh measurements. God. Measurements so are important. If, mm. if you're cooking, if you're cooking something on the stovetop, it's not as important. You can you can kind of like oh a dash of this a dash of that see how it goes kind of thing that's fine baking baking is, is an exact literally science chemistry yes. it's a science mm-hmm. it you're not gonna be like oh we're gonna we're gonna take this potassium chloride and throw it on the stuff you're not gonna do that <laughs> in chemistry you have to measure it mm-hmm. true you have to true. you have to wait until a certain reaction happens before you can continue on to the next part that's what baking is but cooking yeah. Huh. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that being said, I've come to realize recently that, like, my my repertoire, like, the menu I work best with, mm-hmm. is based on my own interests. So, I do fairly well with, like, Japanese food. And, like, with sweets making, I'm pretty good with wagashi. Oh. Like, I've made, um, I've made daifuku, which is, like, <gasps> red bean paste wrapped in, um, mochi. The, mm-hmm. you know, chewy... Mm rice Rice cake cake. Mm. and like all those kinds of like more pasty crumbly desserts like i i tend to be okay with but i don't very often work with meat like i don't grill steaks i don't do this and that and i'm terrible around a spice rack 
I don't know what half the spices do. So That's fair. if I could take a course, I'd I'd just want to work on like the fundamentals of like around the kitchen outside of Japanese mm. sweets. You know? mm, that's fair. Like I, I want to be able to confidently to know your way around a spice rack. I think yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Like I want to be able to like confidently pull a spice out and know exactly what it's used for, kind of thing. Mm. I mean, like, I can I... probably do that for maybe ninety percent of the spices that we have. Ooh, mm-hmm. sasuga. Because... <laughs> That's this is what happens when you have a mom DM that likes to cook a lot, but also make sure you're involved in cooking since you were six years old. So mm, yeah, I mean, <laughs> my 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 family were not as keen in having me in the kitchen just because mm. my dad's a bit of a he, he prefers food? being in control. <laughs> my 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 dad is an expert at breakfast food, and um, okay. when I was in like when I was like eight or nine years old, he. Made sure I knew how to cook eggs correctly. <laughs> eggs. That is actually really, really important. <laughs> it is important. Proper egg oh, yes. cooking. But, like, I just remember Dad DM just, like, standing over me in the kitchen. And I'm, like, shorter, far shorter than I am right now. Just being, like, on a step stool. Whisking Aww. eggs furiously. Being Cute. like, are they whisked enough yet? <laughs> and he's like, no. You can, you whisk can still up. see these globules. You need to whisk it more. And then we add the milk. And I was like, okay. <laughs> no. What are you? <laughs> I'm an a sandwich. <laughs> so weird cute. cat sandwich. Weird cat sandwich. <laughs> but yeah, I but, think um, I think yeah, cooking, learning how to cook and like know your way around like how the spices work and stuff is really a good thing to know how to do. It's mm. like yeah, I, I know I know most of like not I wouldn't say most, I know some of them. Like I know what paprika does, I know it adds like kind of a smokiness I oh know. Mm, Bay that leaf. depends so there's smoked papi- paprika and then there's regular paprika okay then i probably have a smoked paprika that might probably be like... smoked paprika but, is pretty popular but like i i know like thyme and rosemary are used a lot i still don't know what they're for all you need is the bay leaf bay leaf the bay leaf or two or maybe two Somebody's yep. been watching Cooking with Boris. I love Cooking with Boris. It's Boris. I'm a fan. <laughs> He's a big right. fan so of yeah, Right, so yeah, that that would be the that would be the course mm. I'd want to take. Nice. How about Haune? Haune. Um <laughs> I I laughed when you first asked the question because mm-hmm. the answer came to me too quickly and I didn't oh. even I didn't even think about it and I was like, "No, I must trust my mm-hmm. instincts." Um I would want to take a class on Tolkien's Elvish. Oh, like both, oh, that both, doesn't Duolingo have Elvish? I think they do. I think. Well, no, actually, hang on. I let me double check. Hang on, I have the app. Um, I know they have Klingon, but I yeah. didn't think they had like Sylvian Elvish. Maybe yeah. That but went in a Sinbad. very different direction than I was imagining. Why? Why? I don't know why. When she said it was like, oh, I immediately knew the answer. I don't know why my first thought was breakdancing. What? <laughs> what? I just imagined how to make taking a course in breakdancing. Sugoi, you think very highly of me. Because <laughs> I don't... I, 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 how listen. Rune likes to be comfy. I do like to be comfy. Um, I also... <laughs> I like... For anyone, for anyone who knows me, like, knows me, knows me, mm-hmm. I can wiggle around and pretend that's dancing, and it's goofy to look at, and it's funny for, like, a second, but, like, mm-hmm. I am no dancer. <laughs> I have two left feet. And that's why you take a course. But I don't know if I want a course. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm too, when I was, so when I was, when I was young, young Babby Renee, not a Babby. Um, like eh, late elementary school, Renee. Small Renee. Yeah, small Renee. Um, Mama Renee signed me up for um ballet lessons. Oh no! And going from self defense classes after Chinese school on Friday nights to ballet classes, I was very confused. Um. And it's, I didn't like it, um, but I didn't think 
complaining about it was going to get me anywhere. So I never said anything. But at some point, Mama Renee was like, do you want to quit? And I didn't think I'd ever hear those words come out of her mouth. That is not something that she offers. And I was like, yes, yes, get me out of here, quick. And she was like, okay. So she let me quick and I was like, all about it. Um, And then later on, I asked why. Why? Why? Why was I allowed? And she said, because I couldn't do the splits. And it embarrassed her. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) I was like, good enough. You're right. I can't do the splits. Get me out of here. So it looks like Duolingo has, um, it has, ooh, it has Navajo. Ooh. It has Klingon. It says High Valerian. Um, I did not click Irish. I clicked High Valerian. I don't actually remember if, I know Sindarian. Yeah. Um, high, but high, is High Valerian an, an Elvish? Valerian? It might be. High Valerian. Know. Yep, that's uh, Song of Fire and Ice. Oh, so that's that's um that's from Yeah, that's from Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Okay, Game of Thrones, so that's yeah. so that's not Elvish in, in that terms of That is not Elvish, Tolkien. that is Valerian. There we go. That's what I was gonna say. It doesn't look like it doesn't look like Why don't Tolkien they have thing. Elvish? What I don't heck? know, but they don't I don't see like any Oh my gosh, I haven't looked at Duolingo in such a long time. I have French, Japanese, and um Gael- uh, not Gaelic, uh Welsh. <laughs> And I haven't done anything. It's okay. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I'll return to it on a different day. The owl has not come to torment me anymore to remind me it's time for my lessons. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. He he swung by a few times, so I just uninstalled the app. <laughs> You're like, stop. Leave me alone. I'll do it when I want. That's fair. But yeah. Um, it says here they do have Sindarin. You said you, you, you saw Sindarin? I didn't see it. Maybe it's no? not on the app, but on the actual, like, program itself. I, mm. I didn't see it. I checked twice. Mm-hmm. Maybe. I, I mean, I'm just looking at, like, the Duolingo forums, so mm. maybe it's just people asking for it. Maybe it's uh, not actually Maybe, there. yeah. It could be a petitioning to be like, hey, uh, add Elvish. I mean, because I know there are colleges out there that actually offer that as a course. I've seen oh. it. <laughs> um, so, and I had, I had desperately wished that whatever university I go to has it, but of course it didn't, um, because mm. I went local. Uh, so if, if I could, if I could take a class, like, like an actual college course, I don't care if I have to pay for it. I know what I'm getting into. Um, I would love to do any form of Elvish from, from Middle Earth. That's my jam. Heckin' jam. Heckin' jimmy jams. Culinary jam. Hu- culinary classes though was my second. Culinary would be fun. I would yes. I would love to take like a, a chocolatier course. Yes. Oh, to learn how to make like yes. really fancy chocolates. Yes. Because I, I feel like, like that would be fun to learn. Because like come Valentine's Day, I always like want to make chocolates, but like mm-hmm. and I've seen enough like. You know, baking slash cocoa like cookie, cookie, mm. yeah, and cocoa um, videos that I feel like I'd be able to figure my way around. But like, when you're new to something, it you have to take your time, and you have to mm-hmm. be very mm-hmm. careful, and you have to sort of like dedicate your morning slash afternoon slash evening, whatever time of day you're working on it on, um, just to make sure that you've you've got it. And I just don't have that kind of time, so um, it'd be nice to be able to like try that mm-hmm. elsewhere. <laughs> Or, like, with someone who knows what to do. I did take a baking class once. It was, we have, like, a a local pie, um... Pie pie show? <laughs> pie pie show. Pie a pie local show. pie pie show? Pie pie show. We have, pie a, pie we show. have a local pie shop, like, in the, in, in my state. Um, and as, I guess, part of a way to, like, branch out to get other people involved. Have you guys ever, first off, have you guys ever heard of Painting with a Twist? What a twist! Mm. No, I've not. <laughs> it is. It was basically like a group painting session. So, like, you went onto their website and they showed you their calendar, mm-hmm. and each day that had like an open group painting, they would. So they they had on their calendar like the painting that you would be signing up for. Mm-hmm. Um, they provide you the canvas. They provide you the paints. Um, 
and it's called with a twist because if you are 18 wait no if you're if you are of drinking age 21 yes i the reason why i said 18 is because sometimes they have 18 plus um oh, painting groups okay, but yeah. mostly like it, it can also be for children and things like that if it's just like an open an open session yeah yeah um but yeah if you're if you're 21 and older um you can bring your own alcohol and you can paint and drink oh yeah at the we've same got time. some similar ones like that it's um wine night i think is what they call it Ooh, very cute and usually like they'll it. actually pair, it's hosted at one of the local wineries, and they will actually, <gasps> like, bring out some snacks and pair the wine with stuff, and then you have your painting that you're working on. Oh, that's so fun. Yeah, this one didn't have snacks, which is unfortunate, but... Um, yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> we drink alcohol play- and play with paint. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, like, the classes are so chill. Like, at the beginning, they always go through their spiel, and they're like, mm-hmm. you don't even have to paint what we're painting today. You can finger paint. I don't care. Just... <laughs> Just have fun. That's what you're here for. And I was like, yes. Um, just, but the reason why I bring... Just yes. create. <laughs> yes, exactly. Just create. You're here to make art. But the reason why I, I bring that up is because that was sort of the first thing th- of its kind um, in mm-hmm. our area. And then this local pie shop um, to sort of appeal to that crowd a little bit more did baking with a twist. Um, oh. And so they offered... Um, like baking classes and what they would do is you would you would sign up for the baking class based on what they were going to teach you to bake that day um and then they had um snacks because it was a bakery right so they had some things on the side um they had like a delicious lemon lavender blueberry spritz Mm -hmm. it was like a like a fizzy drink or whatever but it wasn't alcohol and we were like so do we bring her like we we didn't ask and that was that was my mistake but they were like oh you could have brought alcohol but we we didn't drink that oh um and we baked a blueberry pie like from scratch and it was delicious and i still have the recipe and yeah so i was like really proud of myself um that i would love to do again for sure Mm -hmm. and i would have if covid had not hit definitely understandable but yeah culinary was my second and and i want to bake a pie now dang i know i've got my grandmother's pie crust recipe that i follow that's the most delicious, delicate, flaky pie crust ever. But oh, it that kind sounds of, so good! It's kind of a pain in the butt to make because you have, have to fold to... it over and over and over again. No, you have to soak your hands in like ice water so that oh, you don't no. accidentally mm-hmm. melt the butter beforehand. Because mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. trick to making the flaky pastry is to have butter in between the layers of the dough, mm-hmm. and if the dough, the butter gets too warm, then you can't do that. Oh shoot! So now your hands Am are I? freezing, will you? So you have to freeze your hands. Mm. And if, if if it's in summertime and we're making it, we'll often, like, have an ice bath below the bowl to keep the butter cold, too. Oh, that's fair. That's a good plan. Yeah. But it's delicious. <laughs> oh, it's no, I've had to do that. Yeah, I've had to do that, too, because my body temperature tends to run a little a little on the warm side. <sighs> my hands get warm real quick. Unfortunate so. gamer. My hands are constantly cold. Except for when they're <laughs> you would not. be great at making yeah. you'd be great at making pies. Yay! Mm-hmm. Teach me your grandma's pie recipe, please. <laughs> I can I can get it. It's written down. Yay! It's just you need you need a pastry blender to do it though. That's the main thing. What's a pastry blender? Like a food processor? Um, no, it's a specific type of tool that kind of like has a handle and then it usually has like three or four unsharpened blades that are set to a curve that you use for blending up your pastry. Oh, I've never even heard of that before. What the heck? Pastry yeah. blender. Pastry blender. So yeah, if you if you Google it, you can. You Kai, can are you looking away because like. you're looking at your other monitor? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, pastry blender. So I think we have two of those, and then we also have a, a pastry scraper, which is just for like. You can use the scraper for blending the pastry, but it's a little bit more inefficient because it's one blade essentially. Hmm. But it's, it's, yeah. Oh, man, you guys go hardcore for your pastries. Oh, yeah. Mom, Mom Diem makes a bunch of pastry. And she also needs the pastry blender to make stollens. Oh, yes, stollen. stollen. I remember you talking year. about that. Yeah, make stollen. And then, yeah, pretty much like any time that she's really fast at making pies now, especially <gasps> since we have like canned pie filling that she's right. made. 
So we can just be like, hey, I want a pie. And she'll be like, okay. And then 45 minutes later, there's a freshly baked homemade apple pie. Oh my God, I wish that were me. I wish that were (laughs) me. That would be, oh I wish that were me. That sounds dangerous. (laughs) The power that lies in my hands. Oh my God, I wish that were me. Yeah. I'm the one that I'm the one that does desserts in my house. My mm. my parents don't really do much for desserts. Same. It must be an Asian thing. I mean, we but... don't typically have dessert as an option. Well, no, just like mm. by by but... making dessert. Oh, no, so like making and it, just dessert? making uh... making des- making yeah, not like entrees. Basically. Right. Mm. Like my dad's the one who comes to me and goes, "I feel like banana bread." And <laughs> I will make banana bread. And you're like, "Wow, you are now banana bread." <laughs> Papa Renee walks around and he goes. Where's my chocolate chip cookies? <laughs> I was like, you want chocolate chip cookies? Like you, is, you is this you asking? Them. And he was like, I would like them now, please. <laughs> you will have to them, wait, sir. sir. Yes, exactly. But like that's his way of asking. So he doesn't go to Mama mm-hmm. Renee because Mama Renee, uh, she's tried to dabble in my handiwork and it's never turned out good. Nope, unlucky. And Oof. and she's like, <laughs> she even admitted it once. Like there was one time she, I was making cookies for one of my high school teachers. I think it was as a like celebratory thing because she we found out she was pregnant. Um, oh, pregnante. Pregnante. So we're like baby will like this consume. So I made her some cookies and Mama Renee was like cut the sugar in half. That's too sweet. Oh right, yeah, Put, you yeah. told me this one and you're like <laughs> wait a minute and it was bad. Right, she was like you shouldn't have done. I was like you told me to cut the sugar. She goes not exactly in half. I said you literally said cut the sugar in cut half. Sugar in what half. do you want me you to lied. do? Like you lied. You did this. Ugh, you so did mad. this. Molding, molding gamer, molding Sage. baking gamer. Sage. Yeah. But that's 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 the classes I would take if I could. Nice. If I had the opportunity. Mm-hmm. Elvish. Elvish. I want to speak. Elvish. I like. I like learning languages. Yeah, languages are fun. Even if it's just like a couple of phrases or, or sentences here and there, I like I like learning the mm-hmm. the basics. I like learning pronunciation is such a big thing for me. Um, because mm-hmm. as long as you know, as long as when people hear you speak the words, they can understand you. Right. Yeah. Then you're good, right? Right. Exactly. So that's that's like a big thing for me, which is why you know, like on Duolingo, when they have those like listen and say, like those those pronunciation like practice things, I'm a big mm-hmm. fan of those because I'm I'm just like <laughs> stolen. Is it stolen? Stolen. <laughs> stolen. I got it. I've tried my best with a few languages, but like I feel I'm the type that needs like constant constant effort for it to stick oh i mean everyone not does having, yeah everyone yeah, does. you just don't like, like just not pick having it up. the time to commit yeah. to it it's yeah. like I've, I've already forgotten a lot of the korean that i've learned it's pretty much like for language learning and retention and stuff it's something that you have to do like daily concentrated effort and like right. smart practice not just listen and Repetition. say the word You're just like revising exactly. what you've done and then picking up the new stuff and then yeah it's that's why i like mm-hmm classes or having like guided courses for yes. languages that helps yes. a lot more than self-study usually yeah exactly. i agree like, once like when i was stuck in korean like once i'm left to my own devices for self-study i usually end up just studying vocabulary mm. but not like grammar right. so naturally the first thing i forgot in korean is like different word forms and stuff mm. i still remember some vocabulary but like i cannot string together a sentence anymore in korean Oh. Yeah, I feel I feel like my grammar is slipping with Japanese, and I never had like a very big vocabulary, so <laughs> some oh, no. things there is slipping too. So, oh, so no, I gotta get my butt to Japan. Slipping. Yes, that's that is the answer. Go to Japan. Mm, I believe it. <laughs> I believe it. I believe that they buy That they buy That they buy That they buy True. True. So, season season one. Dun, 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 dun. Thank you guys. It's I okay. So it's obviously we've we've wrapped up our topics, but I wanted to say big big thank yous mm-hmm. to two members, technically of the GHK radio team, who are never seen. You yes, never see them. They're invisible. Here. They're ghosts. They're in. <laughs> they've been they've been lurking. <laughs> they've been lurking behind the scenes always and forever. Um, mm-hmm. and you you would have never known they were involved had you 
not just been notified just now. But um, yes. one is my mane dasan uyaya, who I have uyaya. constantly talked about here on this podcast. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't be here without you, dear Fuendo. Thank you, thank yous. He was the one who actually was like, hey, you want to do a podcast? And I was like, sure. He was like, find two Fuendos. I was like, got it. <laughs> Bam. Yeah. And he made sure that we had this this background. Mm-hmm. Um you know, this this setup, which is just, like, I can lean in close and just, like, see all the detail. I'm a big fan, big fan. Yeah. And um, making sure that we had the art, um, which was contributed as well by Kai. Big thankies. Um, and uh, Cable. Mr. Cable. Mr. Sir Cable. Sir Cable, the one who, who never Cable. listens to our podcasts. But <laughs> but he is our audio, audio king. He's the one who makes sure that everything is set up properly so that mm-hmm. we're the right we're the right sounds yes mm-hmm. and in background big sounds thank are you, gamer. all lined up yes thank you stinky gamer big <laughs> appreciate big fan big, big appreciate fan. big fan yeah. i didn't even say stinky how did i said it i did <gasps> wasn't it's me. fine what, what was me it's it's it is a an affectionate stinky yeah it's a term of, in, of endearment it's, yes it's, it's stinky stinky kai in, in the best of ways <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Why we, did we, I get, we, Why we was stinky. I caught in the crossfire? We were talking about cable. Why was stinky, I caught in the crossfire? Stinky, stinky fart man Kai. <laughs> okay, I deserve that. <laughs> I'll, I'll, <sighs> but you, you know. win this season, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so the the real reason why we have to take a break is so that Kai can um, come back stronger. He's gonna go on his training arc. He's gonna make friends <laughs> with the Namekians. Uh, yeah. Come back with all 12 Dragon Balls. Yep, yep, yep. He's going to be Super Saiyan next time. <laughs> See, like, right now he's only partial Saiyan. That's why his hair's in the front is gold. That's right, that's right. We're going we're gonna to see his hair stand straight up next season. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my God. I want that so bad now. I want Super Saiyan Kai model. When... I would like Super Saiyan Kai. Super Saiyan Kai. Oh Super Saiyan Kai. Put in the comments if you want Super Saiyan Kai. If you'd like Super Saiyan Kai, please. No, put no, in the no, comments. no, no. You yes. don't have. You don't have to bait them. Let's not end it on that note. Let's not end. Of course the season. we do. I oh, can't wait for season two Super Saiyan Kai. Electric Boogaloo. That's why it's Dragon Ball Z Kai, right? Oh my God! Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> That's exactly it. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's it. It's GHK. It's GHK. Uh, please it's tune GHK. in next time for GHK Super. Yeah. What, what is it? GHK Z? Yes. 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 Yeah, Z is second in line, right? It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It would yeah. be Z, and then it would be Z Kai mm. for the third one. Yes. And Which then is also- that one, Z Kai, would be um, GHK Radio completely in French, just done by Kai. Z Kai. Z Kai. <laughs> but I wasn't going to say it, and then you did, and I love it. <laughs> yes, Kyle will be leading us in, in, in a French dissertation on yep, yep, yep. Uh, the importance of So, Kai, of don't worry. It took, hair. like, about half a year, so you got maybe another six months. Yeah, yeah. Oh, about almost about a year, right? Because hmm. then... Yeah, because it will be... No. We'll take a break, and then it'll be six months for season two, and then it'll be a break, and then season three. So you have, like, maybe ten months to study your French. You can do it. Take you a course. Mm, no. No. Wait. Oh, he's already started. <gasps> he's begun. He's already He'll learning. He'll be prepped. He'll be prepped. I'm. I have ah! everybody here that speaks French is like very excited to. <laughs> so so deep. <laughs> deep. I I hope this is this is specifically for deep. Deep. This is your calling. Yep. You you will lead Kai in a training montage of, of French. Yes. Oh my gosh, Kai's Kai's French training montage on the rock platform. Oh my gosh, it's yes. perfect. Oh it's just gosh. like Dragon Ball. <laughs> the, it's actually from Harune, a Namekian. You can't, Har- Harune can't even pronounce Armur. You can't pronounce it either. What are you talking about? <laughs> Deed gave me a passing mark. No, he on didn't. That. He said it was basic. He was like, uh, I guess it's okay. I, 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 no, hang on. I'm sorry. I guess it's okay. Yeah. I guess. That's that's more than what you got. Yeah, he just oh. laughs at me. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys in season two. So I know we said two. We, we know we said six months. Honestly, season two to be announced. We got a couple to things to, yeah, to, we're to still straighten figuring out. out. We have mm-hmm. we have some some updates and things that have to get mm-hmm. taken care of first. And we don't want to rush timelines. 
So yes. Also, look forward to please follow along on the socials. Uh, yes. So that would be yeah. Uh, Project Hunter Nate on Twitter. We've got girl underscore DM underscore and the Midnight Kai. And uh, we will have announcements for more GHK in the future. Yes. yes. Especially looking forward to season one on Spotify. So it'll be a real Ooh. podcast on a, on a podcast listening on a podcast only platform. Medium. Yes. Thank you. See you next season. Bye bye. Bye. bye.